The moment when you're surfing the net and searching for something new about your favorite band. Old information, side projects. That they will never play concerts anymore. Hmm. Gravity. What? Gravity Kills announced reunion show at St. Louis Delaware Hall on November 11th. Yeah. Hello everyone and let me ask you a question. What industrial metal bands from 90s are popular and still alive? Ministry? Filter? Rammstein? Marilyn Manson? Or... Nine Inch Nails? <laughs> yes, there are lots of new industrial metal bands. But let's remember one of the forgotten and been popular in 90s bands called Gravity Falls. Or, excuse me, Gravity Kills. Here we go. Formed in 1994 in Missouri, Gravity Kills had the first hit single with Guilty, later released on the self-titled album Gravity Kills. The songs were featured on the soundtracks for Mortal Kombat, Seven, Escape from LA and Kissing a Fool, as well as video games like Test Drive of Road, MTV Sports Pure Ride, Vampire Redemption and others. It's important to say some words about the name of this band. Keyboardist Doc Fairley was reading an article where he misread what he third said like the gravity kills. He went back through the article and could not find what he thought he had read. Fairley told other members about it and third that gravity kills would be a great name for the band. Of course the band has toured with different bands like Seven Dust, Big Face, Sister Machine Gun, Pitch Shifter, Sex Pistols and others. It's a bit curious how Jeff Schill, the frontman of Gravity Kills, remembered a number of shows opening for the Sex Pistols. It was an amazing experiment and I was able to spend some time with John Lydon. We think the band wanted new bands on the bill with them as to change the context of the show. Steve Jones and Paul Cook came out to a show we were doing in LA at the Dragonfly. Our show came off very punk. I guess they like it because we were extended an invitation to do the tour. The Sex Pistols actually paid us to play. After the first single, Kilty, became a hit in the hometown of St. Louis, Gary DeKill signed a deal with TVT Records and recorded the first album, that was released in March 1996. The first single, Kilty, charted in the top 10 at nearly every modern rock radio station in the country. The band members wanted to write a song that spoke to the idea of taking responsibility for one's actions and moving forward from past mistakes. Gravity Kills album was also released worldwide with chat success in England, Germany and France. Honestly, this album consists of a plenty of catchy tunes, hard rock with synthesizers and drum machines that make you feel punk atmosphere a bit. In short, if you like such bands, you will understand me. Truly industrial from mid-90s, track by track. The album was produced by John Fire, an English record producer, and members of Gravity Kills, Jeff Schill, Matt Dutton Hover, Douglas Furley, Kurt Burns and Brad Booker. The song Blame uses a sample from the song Illusion composed by the Japanese group Gaino Yamashiragumi for the highly influential 1988 anime movie Akira. The picture in the center of the front cover is called Picturing the Bomb. The image is owned by Rachel Fermi and Acer Samura. They wrote a book that presents the first photographic record of their Manhattan project the United States government sponsored effort to build an atomic device. Photographs of landscapes and of construction of scientific experiments and their results are framed against official portraits and casual snapshots. As for the blame video, it was directed by Peter Christopherson from Throbbing Gristle, and it was shot mainly on a set built in an airplane hangar in Burbank, California, as well as a water park near Los Angeles. The opening part of the video, where Jeff opens the manhole cover, was shot separately after the band played a live show at the Whiskey in LA. In 1997, TVT Records released a remix complication album called Manipulated. It features several remix tracks from well-known musicians in the industrial music scene, including Al Jorgensen, Praga Khan and Martin Atkins. I think you can find a couple of interesting remixes. For instance, Critters Carno added to enough female voices and a few electronic sounds, thus making the song more pop. And of course, there is Jorgensen version of Enough, with weird sounds, samples and a nice beat. Ok, let's speak about Gravity Kills concerts. On April 19th, 1998, Jeff Shield suffered a whip flash, 
when he got overexcited during a warm-up gig in the show at the University Wellness and Activities in San Antonio, Texas. He had not performed live with the band since previous live concert at the Q101 festival in Chicago on October 16, 1997. During the club in what was supposed to be a low-key gig that attracted 6,000 fans, according to the band's label TVT Records. On July 1, 1998, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Jeff Shield got the whole crowd chatting off cue while the show was being broadcast live on the mainstream rock local radio station Laser 103 FM. This was a familiar phrase to the July 2, 1997 Summerfest. The station's DJ tried to get the crowd to stop, but he was having mic problems and the crowd ignored him. Of course, lead singer Jeff Shield fronts the band, but equally important to the live sets was keyboard player Doug Fairley, inventor of a unique keyboard stand that allowed him to move his instrument around and play it at a wild variety of angles and heights. On June 9, 1998, the band released their second studio album, which is called The Version. The album was less successful than their self-titled debut, but still sold well. The single Falling was featured in a 1998 car racing video game Test Drive 5, along with the Pitch Shifter, Fear Factory and Junkie XL songs, while Drown charted in Germany. The band was originally going to name the album Horror, but the record label disagreed with the name and thought it was not a good idea to use the title. So, two days before they would go to manufacturing the CDs, the band had came up with the name Perversion, so it got this name. There are two interesting facts about the song which is called If. The song was about a response to a local St. Louis journalist that disliked the band. And TVT had released this originally as the first single of Perversion, as the track was already added, until the band had some radio stations go early on If, so it caused some confusion. So TVT Records rejected the song to be single as well as the owner of TVT hating the song. Also, a radio promotions guy named Dell Williams had a meeting with KROQ and out of the meeting they were saying that Falling needed to be the single instead of If. This was discussed before If was rejected. As for the tenth song, Belief, and the To Rust was the result of a misprint during the cover of Us production process. A promotional CD was released under the same name in early 1998, containing all the album's tracks. Drown was retitled as Drowned or Drowning depending on the pressing. After being approached by TVT Records, American cosmetics brand Urban Decay released a nail polish as a promotional tie-in product for the album. The polish titled Perversion was a glossy black color and was given away for free with each copy of the album bought from various outlets. The frontman Jeff Schill said of the collaboration. I think it fits in with most rock bands, because there is this marriage between rock music and fashion anyway, and I will be wearing it. Well, let's speak about the album art. It features a scan of an instructions sheet on safe handling of meat and poultry. The inner sleeve features a double spread image of the band in a room occupied by pigs. The frontman Jeff Shu is tied to a chair while rapidly shaking his head while the other band members are stood next to a table with headphones on. Perversion was met with mixed reviews and ratings. For example, some journalists commented that the band was recreating Nine Inch Nails song Head Like a Hole and stated, Gravity Kills Darkness had seldom sounded so great. Well, tastes differ. I think it's a good album where you can find some interesting tracks such as One, Alive, Wanted and Crashing. In August 1999, drummer Kurt Burns left the band to pursue a career in architecture. Gravity Kills departed TVT Records and signed to Sanctuary Records. That was a record label based in the United Kingdom and worked with many interesting bands such as Manic Street Preachers, King Crimson, Kiss, Elton John, Pitch Shifter, Ministry and others. On May 19, 2002, Sanctuary Records released the third studio album Super Starved. The UK version of the album was released by Main Records, which was a part of Sanctuary Records, and the Japan version of the album was released by Victor Entertainment. The star on the album's cover is in connection with the album's name, Super Starved, which designer Craig Wagner created for Gravity Kills album. The word refers to the condition of extreme malnutrition. The name came from a comment on what the band went through changing record labels between their second and third albums. 
Just after the album's release on May 3, 2003, Gravity Kill skateboardist Dark Fairley sustained serious injury to his hand in Allentown, Pennsylvania, while performing in front of a sold-out crowd. The injury occurred when Fairley dropped the custom-made, spring-loaded skateboard on his hand and shattering the bones in his right ring finger during the band's performance on the single One Thing. On January 4, 2003, after some shows, the band officially broke up. Matt Dutton Hover returned to an engineering job, while Doug Farley went on tour with Alicia Keys as a skateboard tech and then worked as a draftsman before forming the production team Shock City Productions with Chris Loish. And Jeff Schill went to work at the Box Talent Agency as a talent agent for corporate casino and clubs. On October 28, 2005, Gary DeCuse reunited to perform for a self-created Halloween music festival in St. Louis called the Killowin Freak Show. Another Killowin occurred on October 28, 2006 at Pop's nightclub and bar featuring Gravity Kills and Fragile Porcelain Mice. And the band had some shows in St. Louis in 2010. And in 2011, the frontman Jeff Shield revealed a previously unreleased Gravity Kills video for Down on YouTube. Ok, let's come back to the first album. The vinyl ratio of this album was released on May 19, 2023. It was the 25th anniversary master and I would like to tell you about its production. A few years ago, Jeff Shield started hounding the Urchant that owns the catalogs of TVT Records and couldn't get anywhere. A long time, a former TVT National Radio Promotions guy texted Jeff Schill one day and gave him the name of a guy to reach out to. Jeff sent the urchin a long email selling the band and the idea, and the company said yes, but it only had the final masters and did not have the finished mixes in a premastered form. Doug Fairley actually still had the Sonic Solution system that Gravity Kills used to record the self-titled album and he was able to find the mixes which the band did with John Fire from September of 1995. The problem was that they didn't have the hardware to push the files out of the mid-90s technology in an Avid system. Doug tried to put something together, but couldn't find the right combination of hardware locally to make it happen. Gravity Kills told the urgent that they didn't want to simply remaster a previously mastered for CD file and hope it sounded right on vinyl. Dark searched the country for hardware to make it happen, and after 18 months of trial and error with various pieces of hardware he had tracked down, he finally was able to push the files from 1995 into 2022. Doug Fairley is the real hero in that story. He actually has the remastered final mixes from all three albums of Gravity Kills. Ok, that's all what I wanted to tell you about Gravity Kills. If you like this video, please subscribe, and remember that industrial metal is... Like gravity, all it takes is a little push. <laughs> 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 <laughs>